C Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Warder for Kit Guru. Today is the day that Western Digital launches their WD Blue SN550 M.2 SSD with a maximum capacity of one terabyte. Head over to Kit Guru's website and you'll see our review there by Simon Crisp, our storage chap. You may wonder, why is Leo doing this video rather than Simon? Well, the fact of the matter is I've known Simon for just about 20 years and I've never in all that time known Simon to complete a single sentence without swearing. So we can't put him in front of a camera. It's as simple as that. The most significant thing to my mind about this drive is that maximum capacity is now one terabyte, but you've still got all the goodness. You've still got NVMe in particular, which means that the blue sits between the black, which is the maximum performance range, and the green, which is the economy range. The differential is that green is a SATA interface, and black has a cache chip and also uses multiple memory chips. The blue here, the SN550, has its one terabyte capacity in a single chip. And the way Western Digital has achieved that is by moving from 64 layer NAND to 96 layer NAND. So one terabyte in a single chip, the other chip on the PCB is their controller. The controller is a rebranded SanDisk part. SanDisk obviously is owned by Western Digital. We think, but we're not certain, we think that controller is very similar to the one used in the black SN750. The other significant change with uh, SN550 is that the interface is now PCI Express Gen 3 times 4 rather than PCI Express Gen 3 times 2 which is what the SN500 used. So in theory you've got double the bandwidth of the previous uh, drive. In fact this is not quite the case but we are confident that the SN500 was slightly throttled by the interface and that is no longer the case. A fundamental point about the SN550 is that the NAND used by WD is TLC whereas most comparable drives use QLC. We're down at the budget end of the range where an Intel 660P costs about £90 for one terabyte. The Crucial P1 costs about £100 for one terabyte. We don't at the moment have a price for the SN551 terabyte. We're hoping to goodness it's priced at less than £120, but ideally we're looking at £100. We need confirmation about this. This is significant. WD is telling us that the use of TLC is better than QLC because once the drive has run out of SLC cache, a certain amount of the storage is allocated as faster SLC cache. Once you get beyond that cache, QLC drives slow down quite significantly. We've established that in our testing at KitGuru. There's no doubt about it. The thing is, you can have an awful lot of SLC cache. Uh, it varies depending on the capacity of the drive, but in the case of this one terabyte model, Simon established they've got about 13 gigabytes of cache. So for regular use, that's infinite. If on the other hand, you're hammering the drive with really heavy workloads, 13 gig, you'll get through that quite fast. Say if you're using 4K video footage, you can get through 13 gig quite fast. And after that, the drive suddenly would slow, particularly if it's a QLC. At least that's what Western Digital is telling us. The thing is, there's a big gap between what you see in synthetic tests and what you see in the real world. In real world tests, the difference between TLC and QLC, you can't really see it, not by eye. In synthetic tests, yup, it's there for absolutely sure. The other thing about the difference in TLC and QLC is TLC is now established technology. We're confident it works. We know how long it takes to degrade. QLC, it's still brand new. There's still a big question mark over longevity. That's not to say it's a problem. We just don't know at the moment. WD is playing on that. We're quite confident. So this is happy old familiar TLC memory. Those other drives that we think are going to be slightly cheaper than the SN550, eh, they use QLC. You've got to be a bit careful. The thing is, these SSDs all come from big established companies. So you've got Intel, you've got Crucial Micron. They're proper companies. We don't think they're selling us junk, that's for sure. Nonetheless, WD is relying on a certain amount of confidence in TLC, and we suspect they're going to want to charge a premium over QLC. So the design is a single chip that is using TLC 
96 layer, one terabyte. You look at the PCB, there's an awful lot of space. There's definitely space for more chips. We're not sure whether WD will actually do that with the uh, SN550, with the blue drives, add extra chips to bump up capacity. We think at the moment they're reserving that for black, which is the premium performance higher capacity range. Also, you don't see a memory chip, a DRAM cache chip on blue. It doesn't seem to hurt performance particularly badly. We are also confident there is a small amount of cache built into the controller, but you're probably talking a few megabytes rather than gigabytes. The other thing before we get to performance is that you get software with Western Digital SSDs, as most manufacturers will provide. In the case of Western Digital, they call it their dashboard software. It so happens inside my own PC, I've got a one terabyte black SSD, so I've run dashboard on my own PC, and it does indeed identify the black. Funnily enough, it also identifies the, one of my other SSDs in the machine, which is a SanDisk. Of course, it's the same company, but it is a Western Digital dashboard, and it so happens it works both with SanDisk and WD. Uh, interesting to see that the SanDisk, which is a two and a half inch SSD, is running considerably cooler than the M.2 Black. When you move across to this test PC I just threw together here uh, to uh, carry the blue, Simon did always testing on a completely different system. Uh, on this system, I installed uh, WD's uh, dashboard software and it identified the blue correctly and showed it's running nice and cool and is in very fine fettle, just as you'd expect. The takeaway from Simon's benchmarking is that the SN550 tramples all over the SN500. We'd expect nothing less. There should be absolutely no area where the SN550 is inferior to the SN500, and it isn't. So that's good news. Surprisingly, the SN550 beats the WD Black SN750 on a great many occasions. As Q depth increases, the SN750 fights back, but generally speaking, the SN550 holds its own and performs better than we would have expected. In most of our charts, you'll find the SN550 is a quarter or a third of the way up the page from the bottom. So performance is okay, but we're definitely in budget territory. However, you'll often see the crucial P1 is at the very bottom of those charts. So it works as an SSD, but it has its limits limitations and we're quite sure that's what Western Digital wanted us to find which is that TLC with the faster PCI Express interface and uh, the revised NAN 96 layer it performs better than QLC. We know they wanted us to find that and we found it and we're not surprised. The two technologies are different. What we don't know at the moment is the price of the SN550 and that matters. At the moment Simon's awarded this SSD 8 out of 10. He thinks it's a decent piece of kit. Provided WD hasn't got carried away and tried to price it too close to black then uh, all is well and good. We're hoping the price is going to come out £100, maybe £110. 120 should be the absolute ceiling. This is a budget drive that does a good job. It is not a premium product, and provided Western Digital prices it sensibly, hurrah! If they get carried away, not so good. Be sure to head over to kitguru.net to read Simon's reviews. There are dozens of charts, loads of data. You need to have a look before you make a buying decision like this SSD. There's plenty to see there. 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe. We'll let you know about new videos as they become available. I'm the Audit for Kit Guru. This is the WD Blue SN550.